Blackburn Rovers, one of the oldest football clubs in the world, forming in 1875. They were one of the 12 founding members of the Football League, and what followed was 11 trophies for this club based in Lancashire. But Blackburn's success was never easy as it seemed, and nowadays the club have not come close to their same success in their early years. What has gone wrong for this club to go from Premier League winners to a mediocre championship outfit? Today, we look at the history of Blackburn Rovers, of where it all began, we look at their best and worst moments as a club, and we conclude on how they have gotten into their position now. But without any further ado, let's delve in what went wrong for Blackburn Rovers. Hello, it's me. Before Blackburn were formed in the original Football League, the first match that they ever played took place in Church, Lancashire, on the 11th of December 1875. Blackburn's first appearance in the FA Cup came in the 1st of November 1879. They beat the Tyne Association Football Club 5-1, but Blackburn were eventually put out of competition in the third round, suffering a heavy 6-0 defeat by Nottingham Forest. What you see on the screen right now is an actual advertisement of Blackburn playing a game, and this was before that they formed the Football League. 1887, 12th of September, they played against the Wednesday, which we now know them now as Sheffield Wednesday. Just an interesting document for all of you just to look and observe. One year later is when the Football League was put in place and they finished fourth in their debut season, actually being unbeaten in all of their home games. During the rest of the 19th century, Blackburn won the FA Cup five times in seven years. This included reuniting with Old Etonians and finally beating them, beating two former Football League teams in Notts County and West Brom, Sheffield Wednesday and Queen's Park in Scotland. And this concludes Blackburn in the 19th century. And you can say that Blackburn were around the best team in all of England in that time. But what fared for them in the 20th century was very, very unpredictable times. Like Moving into the 20th century in the beginning of it, Blackburn even added more trophies into their trophy cabinet. They were league champions in 1912 and 1914 and FA Cup winners again in 1928. But that FA Cup win would prove to be the club's last major trophy for 67 years. How did all of this all collapse? Many clubs found it difficult to adapt after World War II, but Blackburn were definitely one of the worst who fared after World War II. They were relegated in their second season after the war in 1948, and they remained in the second division for the following 10 years. After they were promoted back to the first division in 1958, they were regularly a mid-table side. But one glimmer of hope for Blackburn to get their success reached in the 1960s, and this was under their manager, Danny Duncan. They reached the FA Cup final, but they lost this game 3-0 to Wolverhampton Wanderers. The unfortunate thing about that FA Cup final is that they played most of the game with 10 men, which was days before substitutes were allowed in football games. But another glimmer of hope for Blackburn returned where they were actually top of the 1963-64 season in Division 1 with a remarkable 8-2 away victory over West Ham. However, their lead of the league was short-lived and they finished the season with a really poor run of form and the title was seized by Liverpool. And after that, Blackburn's fortunes took a very different route. They were relegated from the first division in 1966 and this began a long exile from the top. In the 70s, Blackburn bounced between 2nd and 3rd Divisions, winning the 3rd Division title in 1975, but never mounted a challenge to right at the top in the 1st Division. Despite the effort of managers to put the club back on track, they keep falling back into the 3rd Division and they did so again in 1979. They went up as runners-up in the 3rd Division in 1980 and Blackburn would hope not to return there again. Blackburn nearly peaked as they nearly won a second successive promotion. The club missed out on goal difference and promotion winning manager Harold Kendall, who took them to the 2nd Division, was snatched up by Everton. 
Bobby Saxton then took over as Kendall's successor. He only managed mid-table finishes and they nearly achieved promotion in the 84-85 season. But in the following year, they only finished one place above relegation and followed by an abysmal start to the season after that, cost Saxton his job. He was replaced by Don Mackay, who steered them to a decent finish in that season and they also got a victory in the full Members' Cup. Mackay was always very close to achieving promotion in the following three seasons. There was so much frustration and they were so tantalisingly close and just kept losing out in playoffs. And by that time, we reached 1990 and Blackburn were then going to be taken over by local steelworks owner and lifelong supporter Jack Walker. And this move by Jack Walker proved to open Blackburn's glory years. The new owner had made millions of pounds available to spend on new players and they appointed Kenny Dalglish as the manager in October 1991. Rovers secured promotion to the new FA Premier League at the end of the 91-92 season. This was then the end of their exile, 26 years they spent outside of the top flight. Blackburn made headlines in the summer of 1992 by paying for an English record fee of £3.5 million for the 22-year-old Southampton and England centre forward Alan Shearer. After finishing fourth in the debut of the Premier League and runners-up in the season after that, we all know what happened. 1994-1995 proved to be two of the best years of Blackburn's recent history as they won the Premier League in 1995 BT Manchester United despite losing to Liverpool on the final day of the season. Captain Tim Sherwood got his hands on a Premier League title and they'll have to thank Alan Shearer for his goals as well and the miracle work of Kenny Dalglish as their manager. This was their first league title in 81 years and their first major trophy for 67 years. Kenny Dalglish then decided to move upstairs to the position of director of football and Dalglish's position was replaced by his assistant Ray Harford. He guided Blackburn to a 7th place finish in 1996. However, players started leaving. Alan Shearer was sold to hometown Newcastle United. And in the following season, Blackburn failed to win their opening 10 games of the 96-97 season and Harford resigned. Long-serving coach Tony Parts took over as manager to the end of the 96-97 season. Then, Roy Hodgson was appointed. Blackburn finished 6th under Hodgson in 1998, but then was sacked in November 1998 as Blackburn battled relegation. His successor Brian Key was unable to prevent Blackburn from being relegated and then he was sacked in 1999. Parks once again took temporary charge of the Blackburn team, then spent four months at the helm and this time was replaced by Graham Souness. He accepted the offer to manage the club in March 2000. And what we see here with his club, Premier League winners to relegation in five years. How has it gone so catastrophically wrong and they enter the start of a new millennium in the championship or the second division. This speech is my recital. I think it's very vital to rock around. That's right. On top. It's tricky. It's up tight. Here we go. The start of the millennium couldn't be any worse for Blackburn. Their benefactor, Jack Walker, who of course bought the club, he died in August 2000. But nine months later, the club did him proud and won promotion back to the Premier League. In the 0102 season, Blackburn won their first ever League Cup by beating Tottenham Hotspur 2-1 at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. Blackburn peaked during the first decade of the 21st century. They finished sixth in the Premier League under Graham Souness and again in 2006 under his successor, Mark Hughes. Blackburn even qualified for Europe and they were drawn against Bayer Leverkusen, which they unfortunately lost 3-2 on aggregate. On the 22nd of June 2008, it was announced that Paul Ince was brought on to manage Blackburn Rovers after Mark Hughes left to join Manchester City. This was a big moment in football. Paul Ince became the first black British manager ever to manage in the Premier League, a huge step in the right direction for society. However, the results weren't really good on the pitch and Paul Ince was sacked quite quickly. He was then replaced by Sam Allardyce and Allardyce secured Premier League survival for the club. What followed from 2010 onwards was an utter disaster. In November 2010, the Indian company VH Group bought Blackburn Rovers under the name of Venkis London Limited for £23 million. The new owners immediately sacked Sam Allardyce and replaced him with first team coach Steve Keane on a temporary basis. But by January, he was awarded the full-time contract until June 2013. And this shrewded many, many big 
and this shrewded a lot of controversy since his agent Jerome Anderson had earlier played a major role in advising Venkis during the takeover of the club in the preceding months. In December 2011, Blackburn posted an annual pre-tax loss of £18.6 million for the year ending of June 2011. Despite this, the owners of Blackburn provided assurances over the continued funding of the club, even if they were relegated. In 2012, the club were relegated to the championship after being defeated at home by Wigan in a penultimate game of the season, ending 11 years consecutively in the Premier League. And now our next chapter looks at Blackburn's time in the championship. So at the start of the 12-13 season, Steve King, the manager who was in charge of the previous relegation season, was given in charge for owners to try and win promotion and he kept his job as manager. But the pressure from the supporters who had been calling for the manager's removal for months, he eventually got resigned by 29th of September 2012. There was clearly a lot of pressure between the board and the owners. Henning Berg took over but it didn't last on. He only lasted 57 days with only one win in 10 games. Michael Appleton then took over. But he only lasted 10 days longer, 67 days he lasted in charge. The former Preston player only managed 4 wins in his 15 games in charge. But then Gary Boyer managed to take over. He was originally caretaker manager after Berg had left, but then he was awarded with a 12-month rolling contract. He lasted 2 seasons with Blackburn who finished 8th and 9th consecutively, which was heavily helped by the 46 goals in 2 seasons from Jordan Rhodes. After a poor start in the 15-16 season, Boyer left and Paul Lambert took over for Blackburn for the rest of the season. They dropped down to 15th place and Jordan Rhodes this time only got 10 goals in that season. Blackburn were really on a decline and there was no way stopping it. Next season, Blackburn hired former Burnley and Bolton manager Owen Coyle with Paul Lambert's coaching staff and this combination provided a hot mess. Out of his 37 games in charge, he only managed 11 wins with Blackburn. He was sacked on the 21st of February 2017 with Blackburn in 23rd place in the championship. Tony Mowbray was given the task to try save Blackburn. Unfortunately, despite picking up 22 points in 15 games, it wasn't enough and Blackburn were down by goal difference. This was the first appearance in League One for Blackburn Rovers since their campaign in the third division in 1980. However, they did bounce straight back up to the championship being promoted on 96 points with an exceptional performance from David Raya, Bradley Dack and Elliot Bennett to name a few. And since then, we now have what Blackburn are now, spending their fourth consecutive season now in the championship. Their highest finish since returning to the championship came in the 1920 season where they finished in 11th. This year, they matched a position with their debut back in the championship in 15th place, but this was their lowest points return since returning to the championship. Blackburn have got to go for an improvement this year. Otherwise, they'll likely be stuck in the lower half of the table and it'll be easier for them to be dragged down to League One rather than being promoted back to the Premier League. Ten years they are now outside of the Premier League for. Can they end their first division exile with less than 26 years this time? Let's hope so for the sake of the club. And that is the history of Blackburn Rovers and how they have managed a downfall compared to their Premier League winning campaign in 1995. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give the video a like. It does really help the channel. Please subscribe if you're new. It does really help. We're nearly at 650 subscribers. If we can get that, that'd be terrifically appreciative. And please share this video and this channel to as many people as you can. But as always, that wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys very, very soon. <laughs>